So what do you think I would do if I know these triangles are similar and I want to know the length of segment BC? I'm going to set up a proportion. Whenever things are similar, we want to set up a proportion to figure out whatever we don't know. So it doesn't matter which triangle I start with. I'm going to just start with this 27. Do you know what the 27 would get compared with? 40.5. And if you don't know, side AB goes with side DE because those are the first two letters and then you can see that side DE is 40.5. And if I start with the left picture and I go to the right picture, I have to go back to the left picture. I'm just going to call my question mark my X. And what would I compare it with? 45. And then how do I solve that? Cross multiply and divide. Okay, so take a moment. Cross multiply and divide and let's see what our X is. <coughs> okay, what'd you get? 10? 30. 30. <coughs> and that is the length of BC, which is what they wanted, so that's it. So if you ever know that shapes are similar, then we can set up proportions to figure um, out the missing sides. Okay, number two. At the time we were doing this, um, we talked about this quite a bit. It says the figures are similar and it wants to know what scale factor was used to dilate the smaller one to the bigger one. So if I want to know what the scale factor is going from small to big, do I want big number on top or small number on top? Small. Big. big. If I'm going from small to big, I want the big number on top and I want the small number on bottom. So I need to go to the big picture and pick a side. It doesn't matter which side I pick. Let's just pick the 18. So if I pick the 18, 18 I compare it to the 14. Okay, what can you reduce that fraction to give you? Nine sevenths. Nine sevenths, which is answer choice B. B. But notice, answer choice A, this would be if you um, accidentally did it in reverse. So remember, if you ever blow a shape up, if you go from small to big, if you ever blow the shape up, your scale factor has to be a bigger, a number bigger than one. This number isn't bigger than one, so this actually makes a shape smaller. So if you ever go from small to big, you need to have big number on top. That way, you get a number that's um, bigger than one when you're done. Okay. Wait, why wouldn't you do thirty-six over twenty-eight? I can't. You can't. I just come to the same. Uh huh. Yeah. So if I would have done thirty-six over twenty-eight, that would reduce to give me nine sevenths. Okay. So it doesn't matter, we just needed to pick a set of sides. Okay. okay, number three. It says, in the triangle below, what's the value of x? So I don't know if you remember this, but we were told at one point that if we have a segment in the triangle that's parallel to the base of the triangle, that it cuts this triangle up into proportional pieces. So I could say x is to 3 as 24 is to 18, or I could say x is to 24 as 3 is to 18. And that's only because this segment here in the triangle is parallel to the base. So I'm just going to go x over 3. And then what would the other side say? 24 over 18. Okay, take a second, cross, multiply, divide. And what do you get? 4. Now this is not the only way to have done this um, picture. I could have talked about little triangle versus big triangle. So I could have done it that way, comparing the little one to the big one. But because I knew that these were parallel, then I can just match up these sides together. Okay, so now we get into a lot of what your um, test was about yesterday. Some of you, as I, because um, I had to grade some of the tests by hand, some of the tests that I graded by hand, it seemed like some of you knew what you were doing, you just couldn't quite get the answer the way they wanted you to. Because I know there was a question on the test where you got down to the square root of 4,000, which was correct. There were just some people in here who couldn't quite simplify it the way it needed to be simplified. So some people missed it because they couldn't um, put it in simplest radical form using the perfect squares. So a lot of you kind of knew what you were doing, you just couldn't quite get it to the answer you wanted. Okay. So let's look at 4. It wants to know the distance between B and C. So this is the distance I want to know. I'm just going to go ahead and put an X there. Does this look like a 30, 60, 90? No. 45, 45, 90? No. Um, Pythagorean theorem? No. 
Nope, so we're going to do the trig. We're going to do the Sokotoa. You do get to make a note card for this final exam as well. Okay, so first I want to label a hypotenuse if it's in the picture. Do I have a hypotenuse in the picture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the X. Whatever's across from the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. Okay, then I go to the angle that they give me in the triangle, so I go to the 48, and what would you label the 400? Adjacent. Adjacent. So which one do we use? Cosine. cosine. So it goes cosine and then the angle. What's the angle? 48. And then cosine is A over H, so how would I write that? 400 over X. And then I just have to know how to solve for X. So if X is ever in the denominator, you've got to pop him up. What do you do to pop him up? Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by X. The X's cancel out on the right-hand side. The 400 is the only thing remaining. On, mm -hmm, on the left-hand side, I just bring that down. What would you say to do, Autumn? Divide by cosine of 48. <laughs> if I want to undo this multiplication here, I divide. So I divide both sides by cosine of 48. Notice that this is a multiple choice question. Where do you see it? B. B. So it's not actually working it out and giving you an answer, but you have to know how to work it out in order to know what the answer is. Okay, number five. It says in the equilateral triangle below, find H. So we need to talk about an equilateral triangle for a second. What do you know about an equilateral triangle? All sides are equal. What else? All angles are equal. If all angles are equal, what are all those angles? All the sides are 7. They'd all be 60. If all the angles are equal, it'd be 60, 60, 60. Because don't the three angles have to add to be 180? So this little angle right here is a 60. This little angle over here is a 60. And this angle right here is 60, but it's getting cut in half. So this one would be a 30, and that would be a 30. Okay, next thing about an equilateral triangle. I know that this piece here, it chops this base in half. So if this whole thing is 7, what's that part right there? 3.5. Okay, and it wants me to find H. And H is this altitude, it's this up and down segment. And so because I see that it's a 30, 60, 90, that's how I'm going to work it. Um, I could do Pythagorean theorem. You know, if I didn't realize it was a 30, 60, 90, I could do Pythagorean theorem. So that would be okay. I just think it's easier with the 30, 60, 90. Do you remember what you label across from the 30? Okay, so this guy down here is the X. Oh, let me put equals X. Sorry about that. Um, how about across from the 60? X square root of 3. And then across from the 90, I can label with 2x. So do I know what my x is? Mm -hmm. My x is 3.5. And if I solve this equation, if I divide it by 2, I'd get 3.5 that way also. So once I know x is 3.5, what can I put right there in that x? So the height would be what? There we go, 3.5 square root of 3. But I could have done it with Pythagorean theorem. I could have had like x squared plus 3.5 squared <coughs> equals 7 squared. But it's easier actually with the 30, 60, 90s, I think. But you do have to realize because it's an equilateral triangle that all the angles inside are 60. So that makes this a 30, 60, 90. <coughs> okay, number six. It says, is the triangle below a right triangle? How will I know if it's a right triangle? Fill out the box. Thank you. you need to add two sides and yeah, I need to know, I started to draw it, but um, I didn't mean to. I need to know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If it's a right triangle, this is what's going to happen. A squared plus B squared will give me C squared. Which one's the C, do you think? 156. Okay, so I need to square the 156. Oops. I need to square the 156. I need to square the 60. I need to add that to the 144 squared, and I need to see if those two sides equal. So to 60 squared plus 144 squared equal 156 squared. No. Yes. yes. What did you get? It should. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, if I take... Square 156. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
So if I take 60 squared plus 144 squared, I get 24,336. And if I take 156 squared, I get 24,336. So because they equal, then the answer is yes. It's a right triangle. I noticed on the test, um, some of those that I had to grade by hand, when it asked if it was obtuse or acute or right, a lot of people were just comparing A plus B to C. But it's A squared plus B squared compared to C squared. Okay, so in order to know if it's a right triangle, I actually needed them to equal. And they did equal, so I know it's right. Okay, number seven. This is one where we have to draw a picture. It says, a tree casts a shadow that is 140 feet long. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and draw it. So I've got this tree, and it casts this shadow that's 140 feet long. And then it says something about the angle of elevation. If the angle of elevation, is that looking up or looking down? Okay, so looking up, if looking up from the tip of the shadow to the top of the tree is 30. So here's the tip of my shadow, and I'm looking up to the top of the tree, and it says that that's 30 degrees. And then it says, how tall is the tree to the nearest foot? So I'm looking for this length right here. How tall is that? So I'm going to call that X. And I could do this with trig, but what do you notice? What kind of triangle is this? 30, 60, it's a 30, 60, 90. So I'm just going to do it that way. And then because it says nearest foot, I don't have to necessarily worry about um, fufuing or anything like that. I can just put it in the calculator. Okay, so let's start our labels. Across from the 30, we label with a what? An X, which it's already there. This up here would be the 60. And what do I label across from the 60? X root of okay, so I'm going to put equals X square root of 3. And across from the 90, I don't even care anything about because I'm not looking for it. Okay, so do I know what X is? No, I need to solve this equation here for x. What would I do to solve for x? <coughs> Good. I would divide both sides by square root of 3. And I could foo, I could do all of that. But because it wants the nearest foot, just put that in your calculator. Put 140 divided by square root of 3 in your calculator. Just like that. We won't even have to worry about um, fufuing, simplifying the radical. And what would you get? 80.8. Okay, so that's what X is. And when it says how tall is the tree to the nearest foot, is X representing how tall the tree is? So that's my answer. But what would I say to the nearest foot? 81. So 81 feet. So this one was kind of nice because we didn't actually have to multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. We didn't have to rationalize the denominator um, because it was asking us to round anyway. Okay. Number eight, it says, if the hypotenuse of a right triangle measures 65 and one of its sides measures 39, what's the other side? You can probably do this without a picture, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw one. So it says the hypotenuse measures 65, so my 65 goes here. One of the sides measures 39, so I'm going to put a 39 here, and it wants to know what's the other side. What would you do? 30, 60, 90, for Pythagorean theorem. So what would it look like? Mm -hmm. 39 squared plus x squared equals 65 squared. What would you then do to get x by itself? Good. We're going to subtract the 39 squared from 65 squared. Okay. Someone do that and tell me what you get. Okay, then try to take the square root of that and just see if it comes out nice and pretty, since it's such a big number. Okay. Yeah, just a nice little pretty 52. And there's our answer. That's the length of the other side. I'll tell you right now, and you probably have figured it out from this review, I think that um, this test is much easier than the test that you just took. Does this seem easier? Yeah. Okay, yes, Andrew. Let me write you a pass. So, like I told you earlier, I just went um, through the test, and I just tried to write questions just like them. I just changed numbers. Okay, number nine. This one is actually a little bit harder. It says, what value of x will make the triangles similar? And then I put a note in here that the picture is not drawn to scale. Okay, if triangles are similar, that means sides are proportional, right? So if I want these triangles to be similar, I need the sides to be proportional. 
So I'm going to set up a proportion. This one's different than the last one because um, I don't know this length over here and this length over here. Like if I knew these two segments here were parallel and I knew those pieces, I could just say X over this, 40 over this. But I don't know these pieces and I, I wasn't told that those are parallel, so I need to do something different. So I'm going to focus in on little triangle and I'm going to compare it to big triangle. So let's go to little triangle. I'm going to start with the X. What do you think you could compare X to in the big triangle? X plus 40. Because if I want to know how long this whole piece is, I have to add the X and the 40, so it would be X plus 40. So I started with X of the little triangle, and then I have to compare that to X plus 40 of the big. Okay, go back to the little triangle. What else do you know about the little one? 6, and what would you compare the 6 with? 10. Okay, so this one, um, I can't just plug into the calculator. I'm going to cross multiply by hand. So what do you get when you do 10 times X? 10X. Mm -hmm. And if you multiply the other diagonal, don't forget to distribute. 6X plus 240. Mm -hmm. 6X plus 240. Because you have to distribute the 6 with both the X and the 40. Okay, when X's are on both sides, I need to move one of them. So what do I do? Subtract 6X. Good. So let's subtract 6X from both sides. That makes 4X equal to 240. And the answer would be 60. And there it is. And that is why I put in the picture is not drawn to scale, because that X piece does not look like it should be longer than the 40. But it is. This really is not very long. How many questions are going to be on the test? Um, I'm not sure. I know when we were looking at it before, there were 40 on there, and we were trying to cut it down. So mm -hmm. maybe 35. Okay. Number 10, a ladder leans against a building. The ladder is 50 feet long, and the angle between the ladder and the building is 20 degrees. Okay, I want to see if you can draw this picture. So reread it if you have to. Think you have your picture? Okay, I'm drawing my ladder like this, but you might have drawn your ladder like this. I mean, it doesn't matter. And it's leaning against a building, so here's my building. Maybe this is your building over here. Okay, and then it says the ladder is 50 feet long, so I know my ladder is 50 feet long. And then it says the angle between the ladder and the building is 20 degrees. Did you guys put your 20 here? No. The 20 here? No. Very good. Your 20 should be there. It's between the ladder and the building, so it doesn't matter which way you drew your picture, but that's what it should kind of look like. Okay, then I know that those are my 90s, and then it says about how far is the bottom of the ladder from the building. So am I looking for this piece? No. Nope, I'm looking for this piece. So that's what our picture should look like. Okay, what do you think we'll use? Uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. In order to do that, I have to know two of the three sides of the right triangle, and I don't. Trig. So trig. We're going to use trig. We're going to use the Sokotoa. Okay, first, do I have a hypotenuse in my picture? Yeah. The 50 is the hypotenuse. Then I go to the 20-degree angle, and what would you label the X? Opposite. Opposite. Which one do we use? Sine. Sine. So it goes sine of 20 equals what over what? X over 50. X over 50. This one's the easy one to solve. If I want to get x by itself, how do I get rid of division of 50? Mm -hmm, times by 50. I'm going to multiply both sides by 50, and all I have to do is put that in the calculator. So in your calculator, and let's just round to the nearest tenths. This one doesn't say, but if I put 50 times sine of 20 in the calculator and I round to the nearest tenths, what would you get? 17.1. Good, 17.1, <coughs> and that's our answer. The trick's not that bad. I just know the test was a little long yesterday, and um, it probably rushed you a little bit too much. Okay, number 11. These triangles are similar, and I know that because these angles are congruent, and I have other angles in here that are congruent because these sides are parallel. So I need to set up a proportion. 
What do you think? Mm -hmm. x plus 3 over 2x minus 8 compared to 5 over 3. Okay, and then I'm going to cross multiply. So don't forget to distribute. What do you get if you distribute that 3? Three? 3x plus what? Plus 9. And then if I um, cross multiply the other diagonal and distribute? Mm -hmm. 10x minus 40. Okay, I need x's on the same side, so how can I move this 3x right here? Subtract it. Subtract it. If I subtract 3x from both sides, my 9's going to come down. 10x minus 3x is 7x. My minus 40 comes down. What would you do next? Add 40. Add 40, which would make 7x equal to 49. And if you divide, you get x equals 7. There it is. Okay. Number 12. I believe you had a problem kind of like this on your test yesterday. I think there was a square problem. So it says, in the square below, find the length of the diagonal. So this is the length I want to know. I'm going to call that x. What do you know about a square? All sides are equal. All sides are the same. What do you know about the angles? Mm -hmm, they're the same. What are they? So this is a 90 degree angle. If this is a 90 degree angle, and it's going to get cut in half, what is that right there? That's a 45 degree angle right there. And so that would be a 90 getting cut in half. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle that we can work with. Okay, so let's start labeling. Across from the 45, what do we label? X. X. What do we label across from the 90? To the, uh, X. X, squared X squared root of 2. That's okay. You're thinking the 30, 60, 90. Okay, do I know what X is? Yeah. X is 150. So what would it be if I plug that 150 in right there? 150 square root of 2. That's my answer, but do you notice how it says um, find the link to the nearest meter? So let's put that in the calculator. So we're going to put 150 square root of 2 in the calculator. And if we round to the nearest meter, what would you say? 212. And you could have done this with Pythagorean theorem too, because I know that this side's a 150, so I could have done 150 squared plus 150 squared equals x squared. That would have been fine as well. It's just because it's a square, I know that that makes a 45, 45, 90. Okay, number 13. It says, what is the cosine ratio of angle x? So I want to know the cosine of angle x. Cosine is what over what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's look in the picture. Do I have a hypotenuse? Yes. Which one? Mm -hmm. 20. The 20. And then I'm interested in which angle? X. So I'm going over to X. Uh huh. What would you label the 16? Opposite. Opposite. Do I have the adjacent? No. I need to figure it out. So what would we do? Pythagorean theorem. I don't know that it's a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90, but I can use Pythagorean theorem. So if I need to figure out what this side is right here, what would you say for Pythagorean theorem? 16 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. Good. 16 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. Okay. Then what would you do to get rid of the 16 squared? Well, yeah, I can square it or I can just subtract 16 squared from both sides. It doesn't matter. I used to always square it and then square everything and then subtract, but it's almost easier to just leave it 20 squared minus 16 squared. What do you get if you take 20 squared minus 16 squared? 144, and when you go to square root both sides, you get 12. Okay, so this guy right here is a 12, and is that the adjacent? Okay, so now that I know that's the adjacent, how can I write adjacent over hypotenuse? 12 over 20. 12 over 20. And then am I able to reduce? 2 over 10. Or 6 over 10. We can go more. What's 3 over 5. If I divide both of those by 4, I can get 3 over 5. And that is the cosine <coughs> ratio of angle X. Okay, you take a second and try 14. And I do want this one in simplest radical form, no decimal.
You think you have it? Mm -hmm. What'd you get? Nine square root of two over two. Do you agree? Nine square root of two over two? Yes? No? Yeah. Maybe? Can you go through it? I can. This is a 45, 45, 90. Across from the 45, I label with X, which is great. It's already an X there. Um, and that would be an X2. What do you label across from the 90? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put equals X square root of 2. Do I know what X is? No. Nope. So I have to solve this equation for X. So to undo multiplication, we do what? Div division. Mm -hmm. We divide. So we divide both sides by square root of 2. And then that's my answer. I get X equals 9 over square root of 2. But I can't leave it like that. I have to foo-foo. So our fancy form of 1 is square root of 2 over square root of 2. And you get exactly what Masha said. You get 9 square root of 2 over 2. And that's X. Okay, number 15. It says, find the angle of elevation formed by the ground and the dashed line. So if I'm looking for the angle of elevation formed by the ground and the dashed line, does my X go here? Or does my X go here? It goes right here. Angle of elevation is looking up, and it says it's formed by the ground and the dashed line. So the X would go right there. Okay, what am I going to have to use? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the trig. I'm going to use the Sokotoa. Is there a hypotenuse in this picture? No. No. Nope. So what would you label the 52? Adjacent. Adjacent. And the 40? Opposite. Opposite. So you will use tangent. So it goes tangent of, what's the angle? X. And then tangent is what over what? Uh, 40 over 52. Mm -hmm. 40 over 52. It's opposite over adjacent. Am I looking for an angle or a side? The angles are easy. You just have to remember. What do you do to find angles? Inverse. inverse. So if I want to find X, I'm just going to take the inverse of tangent. That's tangent to the negative 1. And then I just recopy the 40 over 52. So if you're ever interested in finding an angle, that's when you do the inverse. How do I get that in the calculator? Um, let's just do tenths. So how do I get that little tangent to the negative 1? second tangent, and then 40 over 52, and if I round to nearest tenths, 37.6. Most of your test is multiple choice, I believe, so you should be able to tell what to round to by um, just the answer choices you see. Okay, 16 says find the length of the side of the square. Okay, we talked about a square just a little bit ago. What are these angles right here? Mm -hmm, these are 45s, 45s, and I know, of course, that's the 90. Okay, so across from the 45, what do I label? X. X. And I would do it across from the other one and across from the 90. X root of 2. Okay, so I'm going to put equals X square root of 2. Let's go ahead and make this one exact, no decimal. So do I know what X is? No. Nope, so I need to solve this equation for X. How do I solve this? Divide by square root of 2. And this should be getting easy because we've done it quite a few times now. So I get 48 divided by square root of 2, but I can't leave it like that. I have to foo-foo. I have to rationalize my denominator. What would I do? Mm -hmm. Multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2, which makes what over what? 48 square root of 2 over 2. Beautiful. And then I can go one more step. I can reduce and get 24 <coughs> square root of 2. And that would be the length of the side of the square. Because that's my x, and x represents the lengths of the sides of the square. Okay. All right, number 17. It says, find the perimeter of the triangle, make your answer exact. How do you find perimeter of a triangle? You need to add mm -hmm. We're going to add all sides. So I need to know what all three sides are to this triangle, and then once I know what all three sides are, I can add them. Mm -hmm. It's a 30, 60, 90. So let's start our labeling. What do you label across from the 30? X, x across from the 60? Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to put equals x square root of 3 and across from the 90? 2x. Two. Two x. Okay, do I know what x is? No. Nope, so I'm going to solve this equation. How would I get x by itself down here? Divide by square root of 3. And what's going to happen with those square roots of 3? They just cancel out. Anything divided by itself is 1. Shoop. Anything divided by itself is 1. Shoop. And you get x is 7. Okay, so if x is 7, how long would this side right here be? 
seven. How long would this side over here be? Fourteen. Okay, and what was this side originally? Seven square root of three. So here are my three sides, a seven, a 14, and a seven square root of three. So if I wanna find the perimeter, I'm gonna add the seven to the 14 to the seven square root of three. The only ones I can actually add though are the seven and the 14. So that makes how much? 21, and then you just recopy the plus seven square root of three. You can't add those together because they would both have to have a square root of three behind them in order to add them together. And so that is the exact answer. No decimals, but it's exact. Okay, this next one, um, at the time you guys thought it was really easy, it's just been a while. It says in the figure, D is the midpoint of AB. So I know those two pieces equal. And it says E is the midpoint of BC. So I know those two pieces equal. So that means DE is called a mid-segment. If this is the middle of that piece and E is the middle of this piece, this is called a mid-segment. And do you remember how the mid-segment compares to this bottom piece? Yes. This mid-segment is half the length of the, the bottom piece. So if the bottom piece is 20, what would DE be? 10. 10? If AC, if the AC, the bottom piece is 4X plus 12, what would DE, the mid-segment, be? 2X plus 6, just half of it. So the mid-segment is half the length of the base. Okay, we can do these next two. Number 19, it says angle A and angle B are complementary angles. If measure of angle A is 65, what's measure of angle B? What do you remember about complementary angles? Mm -hmm, they add to equal 90 degrees. So if one of your angles is 65, what would the other one be? 25. So complementary means they add to be 90. Okay, and then 20 says, what's the image of the point A for negative 9 under this translation? What is this telling you to do to your x coordinate? Subtract. Six. So if I took my x coordinate of 4 and I subtracted 6 from it, what would my new x be? Negative 2. And then it tells me to take my y coordinate and add 2 to it. So if I took my y coordinate, negative 9, and I added 2 to it, what would I get? Negative 7, and that would be my new point. So this is what the majority of your test looks like. This is the part that will count as a 6 weeks test. Now, before you run off, I actually have one I want you to try to do tonight. I know you don't want to hear that, but this um, only has, and it's pretty easy, it doesn't take very long. This one has 11 questions. I want you to try to do these tonight, and then I want to go over them tomorrow. Are we keeping these tests? I'm going to let you keep them, yeah. Okay, so don't run away until you get this. 11 problems, and I do want you to do them tonight, and then we can go over them tomorrow. Okay, let me know if you didn't get one. You need one minute?